Thank you for joining us. An enviable task, Kev. Okay, thanks very much for that. I, the whole point is, is I'm, I'm not going to try and convince you, because <laughs> that's the kind of crux of this, this whole thing. And, and when you read the, uh, the, the flyer for this, uh, this event, I'm sure you kind of sat back and went, I'll tell you what session I'm looking forward to most today is going to be the sustainability one, right? Um, even when I mentioned it over lunch at the table, it wasn't, oh God, <laughs> that lot. So yes, I work for the GEO Foundation. Uh, and I'll come on to environment, the word Gulf Environment Organization in a second. But so sustainability has got that, that kind of baggage thing. Um, it's got that kind of component of it. And if I said to you guys, think of the word sustainability, what does that make you think of? You'll probably start firing out all sorts of stuff. I know we did over lunch. And then the first one that I'm going to share with you, and there you go, it's environment. Because probably most folk will sit there and go, oh, well, it's the environment, John. That's what it's all about. And just so you know, I work in an office full of sustainability boffins, people with PhDs and MSCs and everything else. And I'm flabbergasted half the time at what they're talking about. I have no comprehension of it. And that's the sort of word that makes them tear their hair out. They're sitting there going, it's not the environment, John. When we're talking about sustainability, it's, it's everything, man. That's, <laughs> that's what it's all about. So if I said to you, okay, think of another word then. Um, then you might come up with different ones, lots of different things, current things, issues that come up on the news every day. Um, words that are, well, pretty intimidating and scary. Some of these things probably have very little to do with anything to do with golf whatsoever. And you're sitting there going, what difference does this make to me in my job? Understandable to ask that question. So let's link it back to golf for a second. And we spoke about this at lunchtime. We, we talked about the influence of these big issues on you guys in your day-to-day -day job. You don't have to worry about what these things say. I'm just going to show you these two images and explain them very quickly. Campaign run by WWF. You, you all heard of that? You might even have sponsored a panda at some stage. <laughs> Got one of them fluffy ones and given it to your better half. WWF ran an international marketing campaign um, reaching out and the messages were fairly simple and clear and concise. I'll just summarize them for you here. First one, golf courses soak up tons of water and waste loads of resources. Second one, golf courses Chop down trees, see what they've done there, that's pretty good, and destroy valuable habitat. With the one core message, and this is a quote from these ads and all the other ads they did as well, help us stop them. Oh my word, we're really struggling now, aren't we? These guys who sit at the top table with governments, ministers for sport, people that make decisions about how much money gets pumped into golf, turned around and said, we don't like you in golf. We don't, we don't like what you do. We're going to try and stop you. Oh my word. How is that for our PR? How is that going to help our agenda? We've been talking all day about community and engagement. We're getting the people who aren't playing golf to come and think about joining our clubs. And suddenly we're getting told, stop, we hate you, go away. Not a great thing. So I want you to ask this question, honestly. It's an honest question and I want you to answer it honest, honestly. Decision time. When you're making decisions, when you're making decisions about your machinery renewal, about your future direction of your club and it being a family one, when you're making decisions about um, chopping down the bush on the third hole or what source of fertilizer you're using, who you go to to get your, your, uh, your electricity from, all these different things, is sustainability on a scale of one to 10, how important is it? One, just go and leave me alone. <laughs> To write up to 10, it's central to everything that we do. It's, it's core to all those decision-making processes. Go and jot, jot a number down in the corner of your pads. I want you to think about this, genuinely. Yeah, honestly, honest number. Jot it down on your non-recycled paper pad. <laughs> 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 Using your single-use plastic pens. <laughs> aye, aye. <laughs> so there you go. You've all got a number, I'm not going to test you on it, I just want you to honestly answer that number and say to yourself, right, well, what is it? Does it even come into my concept? Because there'll be some of you guys up here in the 10 scale, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 on the upper end of it going, you know what, John, we've achieved GEO certified status, don't you know? And I would say, well done, how are you getting on with your action plan? Or have you parked it until three years time when you've got to renew? That's a big question. Some of you guys will be sitting there going, well, what about a 6 because we've got a subcommittee and that subcommittee's job is to work on saving resources, reducing costs, seeing what kind of benefits we can get of that. And a whole pile of you will be down this end going, 
I'm just being polite at this stage. I'm listening to a guy that doesn't even have a razor. He's that sustainable. <laughs> right? So let's make it relevant for you guys on the end of the one at the one end of the scale. Marketing and brand. We were sitting at lunch and Andy goes and says, it's PR. That's all it is. It's a, it's a core message. We can go out and we can say, we're actually good. We're good for the environment. But our brand's laughing, so that one's not gonna work for her. <laughs> a quality golf experience. I think if we turned to our golfers and said, you know, we could try and improve the quality of the product that you're getting. We could offer you different kinds of things in the food and beverage operation. We could give you something that's a little bit different. Something that's improving the quality of your golf course. That might get your interest. Club operations, there's a great deal of focus. We've had today on talking about the external stuff and what we have to deal with externally, marketing our clubs, growing our clubs. Let's also think about the internal management side of it. Some of it's the money thing. Other parts of it is how do you engage with your staff? What kind of practices, processes, efficiencies can you bring in as well? So there's all these little components that go into the operation thing. We've saved money, so let's be upfront about this. The perception is gonna be, bloody sustainability is for all them rich clubs that can afford to spend 20 grand on something to wash their machines. It doesn't have to be like that. You can spend piles of money, but you can also save money. And you can also see sustainability as a means to generate new revenue. We've talked an awful lot about community and the engagement there, charity drives, all these different things that go on and come from the core values of sustainability. And then legislation, you might not see that one, but the key point there is that this stuff's coming to get you and it's gonna be a headache at some stage. Plastic bags came and went, that didn't really bother us, maybe the pros. What about disposable coffee cups? What about the stage after that, which we had a conversation about, didn't we, Paul? What about the stage after that, when they start showing up with their own reusable coffee cups and saying, go and give me 20p off my coffee in the club? What's your policy on that one? It's interesting, isn't it? Prepare yourselves for these policies. Other one that crocked up, uh, we're talking about machinery replacement and all the little side benefits that you get. And bags and bags of fertilizer sitting around in your sheds, probably because you got a two for one offer or buy this many and you get this many back. These sort of things happen and they're just resulting in wastage. Now, you could get rid of it because I care and I want to do a difference. So you could get rid of it because you could stop that process because you actually want to make a difference because you feel like it'll save you money or it'll have other benefits to your club, it'll help your PR. I want to give you a couple of quick themes because I work for an organization who's tried to simplify this stuff. They're all sitting there with their PhDs coming up with a million different means by which to measure sustainability. And I say, well, let's keep it simple, as simple as we possibly can make it. Sustainability can be about fostering nature. Now your golf course is gonna fall into that component. So that might be an area you'd say, tell you what, we'll have a chat with the greenkeeper about that one. It's certainly something that if it's 53% of your expenditure, you might want to have a wee look at. Saving resources? Well, we've talked a little bit about that and it could be about the resources you're, you're utilizing. It could also be about the ones that you're expending, expending as well, yourselves as well. And isn't that funny? I, I was really wondering whether we're gonna talk about community today. Should I have questioned it? <laughs> this message keeps coming back time and time again. And whether it's for PR purposes, for income purposes, and you're generating 20 grand through your hashtag odd event that you're doing, or is it about your uh, value to the community and getting people in who aren't playing the game right now? Um, even the, the, the provision of green car parking spaces, there's a winner for you as well. What's your, what's your approach to that in 10 years time when everyone's driving electric cars? You're gonna have a place in the community and you might be asking that, starting to ask that question of, well, as it was said earlier on, does my club want me? Does my local golf club want to reach out to me? So this factor is a really big one as well. But that's one definition. I, I like this one a little bit better because sustainability is just really this big balancing point. And it's, this is stolen from some, from some academic guy. And in simple terms, I would say it's, it's the ability of your organization, your club right now, to meet its current needs without adversely affecting the future needs. Now, I know what it's like. We're all, quite frankly, bogged down in the day-to-day -day of this stuff. We're sitting here, and to be honest, it's a lot more of a complex picture than this. There's things balancing on other things and we've got competition events and people moaning and committee members and year-end accounts and VAT returns and all these other different things going on here. So you've got a ton of different things to be juggling over here and you just need to be asking yourself the question, right, does that affect the future needs or do I not care at this stage? It's an honest question. So, 
to-do list. I always go away with a to-do list because I'm one of those kind of folk. So ask yourself this question when you go back to your club. What's your strategy? On a scale of 1 to 10, how much do you give a damn about it all? And then go back to your committee, board, owner, and say, how much do we give a damn? And if the answer is 1 out of 10, and we're going to be focusing 100% on the club's current needs, so be it. It's absolutely fine. You're allowed to do that. But just bear that in mind that it may well affect what your future needs are going to look like. And it may well affect how you're managing your course, the kinds of equipment that you're going to need to use in 10 years' time, um, or what even your club's level of community engagement looks like in the future, whether there'll be a club in the future. Well, that's a doomsday scenario, isn't it? <laughs> Review your practices. Now, we've got a fancy tool to do that, but there's loads of different sources and resources you can go to. But you need to go through and say, well, let's not buy off more than we can chew on this one. Let's just reflect on what we're doing. Let's pick one of those areas, nature, resources, community, or a really specific one, the waste that we're creating, and go in and just review some of your practices that you're, generate, that you're doing. Test them with members of your team and say, right, well, what are we doing there? Could we do that better? Could we do it differently? Could we make a difference uh, in our community? Could we make a difference in our club? Could we save ourselves some money or otherwise? And then that comes to the big crux one, which I think is an undertone in all these things, really, isn't it? Who's the responsible person for this? Because, and I'll keep coming back to it time and time again, I keep speaking to club managers, and I keep saying to them, right, do you want to have a chat about this? And they go, that's brilliant. We can pass you on to the greenkeeper because that's his gig. Fantastic. Well, we've got one person. Maybe he's got a wee subgroup going on there. But that might not necessarily affect the operations in your clubhouse or your club pro and the work that goes on in the volunteer inside of the club, all the work that the committee does. So think about that thing that I said earlier on, putting together a wee subgroup, asking the honest, brutal question. And uh, just as a positive finisher for us, um, remember those bad guys at the start that hated us? That's, this is about as much of a concession as you get <laughs> out of them. We would like to see golf meet the opportunity. So at least they're not saying we hate you anymore. But they're saying, we need you guys, we need golf clubs, we need you, John, to go out there and spend time with clubs, reviewing those practices, deciding whether it's important, and setting yourself some targets to try and improve. There you go.